In the uh, following session, I'll be uh, showing how to use the gradient shader to uh, create your own custom flame um, uh, by using a fractal shader. So the uh, the step is is actually quite simple. So you first need to get a texture gradient uh, shader, and which is actually going to shade the uh, the, the the flame color so if we connect this one onto surface like like this and we do uh, create the render region we see that the actual gradient is using a default uh, you know uh, RGBA uh, gradient uh, color that came with the preset now if I'm going to load a preset that I've uh, saved previously that uh, shape up uh, the actual flame such that we have a sense of a uh, of, uh, flame wobbling uh, the shader here is is actually the the concept of of uh, modulating a, a gradient is is by actually going here and modulating the range max of the gradient. So if I connect, let's say for example, a share scalar, and I connect this thing to slightly range max, depending on the value, I can actually start to modulate uh, the the height of the flame here by typing let's say one. I'll get a full uh, full height. If I say 0 0.5, half. If I say 0 0.5, I'll get a, a, a flame. So what we really want to do here is actually create a pattern that goes up and down with color here that will uh, determine the, the fly, uh, flame height. Um, so we'll disconnect this one and go back to the, the, the actual flame color. The other step actually is to create uh, some sort of a, of a texture or pattern to be able to give some some sort of a, a flame shape. So we'll use another gradient to do this uh, by taking gradient here. We'll connect this one directly to the surface, and we'll do a render region. Edit the uh, gradient and click on the black and white preset, and we'll change it to radial wave and we'll uh, change the actual color right here such that we have really a black and white and now as you can see uh, it's really not a flame because the, the the shape of the flame is going to be a center towards the outer uh, you know limit of the, the this uh, plane what we really want to do is more like having the flame at the base here and, and kind of grow up like like if it was like uh, burning like uh, burning this this line or rod for example now what we want to do is offset the actual flame such that we have a sense of of uh, of, of uh, flame center or flame base now we need to go back to gradient color and start to adjust slightly the uh, color here in order to get this this roundy you know flame look now the next step here is to take this uh, gradient color and and take this uh, uh, white color that that fades to black and modulate it with the fractal shader so we'll go get a fractal shader right here and we'll uh, connect this one directly on color one and I'm uh, going to go here and set it to black to zero now if I connect this one directly to surface now you see that the actual pattern is start to appear but we need to adjust the fractal such that we have a pretty good uh, pattern uh, to that uh, it's going to use. So this is pretty much uh, the value, so 0 0.239. I've computed, uh, I've tried the actual uh, settings prior to that. So now we have this uh, this value. What is important now is that level DK will actually be used to drive uh, the actual flame uh, details, you know, depending on what is the actual flame age. So we want to have um, really a lot of details here but as it goes up you want to have less detail so we'll use that to uh, to drive the actual uh, to to get this effect so we'll connect the gradient directly onto the uh, let's say fractal uh, level DK now we start to have a little bit more details right here and with less details as it goes up now as you can see the uh, the, the the actual uh, fractal is pretty shaped up and it's it's perfect now we can actually go and connect this one to max range and we'll connect this one directly onto the surface right here now we start to see the flame that uh, that's that uh, being shaped up now um, the uh, now if we want to have an animation now as we shuffle the timeline the the, the flame is, is is fairly static so obviously we can go in fractal and start to play with this value to get a sense of of uh, 
a flame animation uh, being uh, being being done here. Uh, the idea here is uh, if you want to instantiate this this board, this billboard among let's say the scene, uh, you don't want to all the actual uh, flame board to have the, the the same flame pattern being repeated. So we want to randomize, let's say, a little bit the, the actual flame. And uh, to do this, what we're going to do is, is actually use the, the Z value in world space of the plane to uh, compute an offset in the animation uh, the time. So what we'll do here is actually go get a uh, state vector and we'll edit the shader and use intersection. Now the intersection is uh, we'll need to do a space conversion to put it in world space. So we'll uh, just use the vector coordinate converter which is uh, used to do this uh, space conversion. So we'll say it's basically a point and we want to bring it back to the world coordinate. Now we have uh, we have the XYZ of the uh, intersection point at render time uh, with this uh, output right here. Now what we have to do is uh, put a conversion shader that uh, will extract the the Z component of the uh, the Z component. So let's double click here and extract the Z component. Now as you uh, we we put this uh, this thing onto time now as you can see now uh, let me refresh this and rearrange this. Uh, as we refresh, now obviously the it's the same pattern, but it's simple because the pattern, uh, the actual time is driven by the the y value. So if I type a different value in in, in z, I'll get a different flame uh, pattern to be animated. So let's put it back to zero. And now what we're going to do is is we'll uh, use a, a mat scalar basic and we'll animate the flame through time and we'll use that and we'll use this value as being a offset so whenever the uh, the the offset in, in time so whenever the actual flame is moving into space we'll get a, a random flame uh, type so the first thing here is actually to connect directly to time we'll go here and animate the actual flame so we'll connect this one to zero we go back to 100, we'll type a value of a 6 and key this. We'll go to the animation editor and we'll make this uh, interpolation a gradient and we'll make it linear such that the actual animation keep on uh, going after the uh, the actual keyframes like which is 0 and 100. Now we have the animation, so if we shuffle the timeline, you'll see that the actual flame is actually being animated. Now we'll connect this one here to the input right here, and that is an additive value. So we'll use the, z, the actual Z position, uh, the intersection point, and add it to the time such that if I duplicate this, uh, this flame, this object right here, so let me just uh, orbit around and take this object and duplicate it and move it slightly right here voila and I do render region now you see that this is the same flame pattern as the other one here because it has the same Z value if I take it and just move it slightly in minus one I'll get a different flame pattern just by randomizing the position of these uh, these sprite so now I can actually go and, and uh, create a, a field in fire easily with this. So I'm going to stop recording now and I invite you to watch the, the, second, uh, the second phase of this, uh, this uh, session. Thank you.